The Steelers won 18 to 10 over the Atlanta Falcons. And the big shocker about this game was the Steelers won without scoring a single touchdown. They literally did not score one touchdown. They kicked six field goals and beat the Atlanta Falcons. So it was just wild to watch this game because the whole time I'm watching the Atlanta Falcons and I just know they're going to strike, score a touchdown again and just wrap the game up, you know, kind of put it out of distance. But it was just weird because the Steelers stayed around. They didn't really get anything flowing on their offense, but they stayed silent on a defensive end. And eventually they kept kicking field goals. And here we are. They ended up winning the game. But Let's break it down because it was a lot of things that happened. So first off, the Steelers had some lockdown defense. I want to give credit where it's due because it's due to the Steelers right now. They Their defense was impeccable this game. Sent Kirk Cousins through hell. <laughs> TJ Watt was pissing me off all game watching this. TJ Watt is a monster. He was a leader in his position all last season. Um, and now you can see why at the start of the season, he's already carried that same sort of momentum and then not only was tj watt a huge problem on that defensive line for the steelers but you also had montravius adams who was also a huge impact on that defensive line honestly the entire steelers defensive line was just just causing ruckus and causing chaos for the atlanta falcons they kept the pressure on kirk cousins couldn't really get a pass off, was swallowed up a bunch of times throughout the game. And I mean, honestly, some of the things that happened aren't on the stat sheet, but if you look there, you'll see TJ Wyatt had two sacks, but the things that happened that aren't on there were because of penalties. So in the penalties, if these things would have counted, we saw two additional sacks, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, all just from TJ Watt on the the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was impeccable, man. And he took a lot of offense away from the Atlanta Falcons. And he was just a true home wrecker, honestly. So the, first and foremost, the defense was solid from the Steelers. I don't want to discredit them at all. Um, Atlanta Falcons had a lot of struggles going on, which I'll touch on in a second. But even on the offensive end, the Pittsburgh Steelers were pretty damn impressive. A lot of people came in to the season hating on Justin Fields, saying he's not ready and, and just kind of clowning Justin Fields based on his prior experience with the Chicago Bears. And we seen a different side of Justin Fields. When he had some solid protection by the O-line, he made plays to Pickens and he picked us apart. He picked the Atlanta Falcons apart whenever he had time to actually throw the ball. They handed the ball off to Najee Harris. He did his thing running the ball. So when you look at all the different weapons that Justin Fields has now compared to what he had, it's a clear difference of night and day. And it also shows why they had some sort of success running the offense there in Pittsburgh, even though the game was in Atlanta. So I, I'm happy for Justin Fields. I'm glad he played well. He completed over 70% of his passes, threw for 156 yards, no interceptions, was very patient, took care of the ball, and ultimately controlled the offense for the Pittsburgh Steelers to help them win the game. Even though they didn't score, which I thought they would have, they still were able to continuously put points on the board, which gave them the win. The Atlanta Falcons, on the other hand, they were unable to even put points on the board. The offense was a shit show. It was struggling all game. We seen maybe at least one drive where it was kind of solid. Actually, two. There was two drives from the Atlanta Falcons that was actually solid. And I witnessed one of them was a touchdown. You ended up getting it to Kyle Pitts. Everyone was happy about that, especially the fantasy owners. But there was another drive that was ruined because of sloppy play there was a fumble in the red zone that caused them another potential touchdown or another potential three points that could have been on a board and helped them out there was a lot of simple mistakes kirk cousins threw multiple interceptions threw an interception earlier in the game and hey you kind of had to let it slide it's the beginning of the game you can make up for it but then you get a game winning drive and you fail to even get your team in field goal position. You fail to even get a fair shot to win the ball game. You throw another interception. It was bad. It, it was off. It was awful. And, and from the Falcons offense, one of the things I noticed is it was just a lot of thinking going on. It was a lot of trying to figure things out at the last second. And that ultimately led to the stupid penalties that they received. You can't do that. You can't really just be out on the field thinking a lot. We all know any professional sport, any sport, you're playing about muscle memory and reacting. We didn't see a lot of that from the Atlanta Falcons. They were struggling. 
They were struggling. It was a lot of confusion out there on the offensive end. And, and it it showed. It showed. I know it's week one. I don't think it's time to, you know, really panic, even though I'm, I'm telling you the offense didn't look good. The defense was getting picked apart. I, I know I'm telling you, hey, it's, it was looking bad. But I really don't think it's time to panic for the Atlanta Falcons just because it's week one, obviously. And we've seen the potential that that offense has. We've seen the potential that the defense has. They both sides got to clean some things up. But above all, Kirk Cousins can throw the ball and they can actually get the ball out and make something happen in the air. And then the Falcons, they did also heavily rely on the ground game, which moved the ball fairly solid against a pretty damn good defense as well. So it's a couple of different things to be proud of. You know, if you are standing there for the Atlanta Falcons and you're feeling a little bit down because of this loss. But above all, a Steelers definitely earned this game. They played solid, and this it was well-deserved. It was well-deserved. So, 